Today is drum like a pirate day. Arr! Let's talk about it. Hey y'all. My name is Penny Larson. Welcome to today's drum lesson. Last week we talked about flow. That mystical, psychological, and or drum groove concept that people talk about it a lot, but never really seem to have any strategies about how to access that state. This is part two in a three-part series where we're going to try to figure out some strategies that we can enter that state at will. Last week there was lots of talking and a bit of playing. Today there will be more playing and, knowing me, still a lot of talking. But the focus today is going to be more on what's going on on the drum set. Before we begin today, I want to recommend another couple books. It's typical for me to recommend music books and drum books to students, but for this series, we're going to be reading actual words. The two books today kind of go together. The first one is The Inner Game of Tennis, which is a book that is about as old as I am, which means it's really old. And that's by W. Timothy Galway. And it's become a classic in how to separate yourself basically into, to oversimplify, a doer and a critic. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today and even more about it next week. The other book that I want to recommend is a follow on on the inner game of tennis, and that is. The Inner Game of Music by Barry Green. These books really dive into performance mode and talk about letting go of that critical voice that we were talking about. The concept in both of those books, overly simplified to a sentence, is get out of your own way. It's kind of the tagline that I used for last week's thumbnail. But what does that mean, and what does that mean for you when you're trying to practice? This is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. This is not a liberty to not practice specific patterns. It is not some sort of fluffy, there-are-no-mistakes approach. There are all these famous quotes. Beethoven said, the wrong note is meaningless, but the lack of emotion is sinful i forget the i forget the exact quote miles davis said don't worry about the wrong notes there aren't any there are all these pithy little quotes about oh there aren't any wrong notes and if you're on stage that's absolutely true if you're in the practice room it's true and it's not so what do we do when we need to work on perfecting something but we also don't want to overthink we don't want to get in our own way the short answer is we Think about what we're going to do, and we stop worrying about how we're going to do it. I have two confessions for you this week, and this is the first. This is an incredibly difficult thing for me to do. I am hypercritical, hyper-observant, and I love the minutia of technique, the how. How do we do this? How do we do this? But I get in my own way, and truth to tell, sometimes I overteach and get in my students' way, too. We're kind of all in this together. And so I'm sharing this with you that I have room to grow in this area as well. I'm sharing with you things I know, but I'm hardly a finished product. What does that mean? Just do what you want to do and you don't think about how. Let's take something really simple. I'll use an example of one of my favorite exercises ever that helped me build up my double stroke rolls in a way that I never thought possible. Get that second note as powerful as the first without killing myself with exertion exertion to play all the all the notes with my wrists. I have mentioned before I grew up marching in drum and bugle corps and the the instructors that taught me were very 
hardcore about limiting the bounce we were using. They wanted us to play almost everything from a loose wrist standpoint. And then over the years, the core that I marched with got a few different instructors, and so the approach changed a little bit. And there was this exercise that came along that is actually in one of my videos from last year. It is probably in a couple of my videos, honestly, because it's such a good exercise. Check this out. Quarter notes and then eighth notes, measure of each, doubles. So right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Accent the second note. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, and so on. They didn't tell me why. They just gave me that exercise to do. And it helped my doubles, and I didn't really know why, and I didn't really care. And then years later, when I was studying with a drum set teacher, he explained to me that they had taken Buddy Rich footage and slowed it down and that when he was playing his doubles with his right hand he was opening his hand and closing his hand this was back in the day when not all the information about everything was everywhere and these little pieces these nuggets of information dribbled out from different teachers and so we spent some time doing that kind of open hand thing you know so the first note and and after doing that for a while and being exceedingly frustrated just just what the heck is going on here it was probably months if not a year later i realized wait a minute that is what i already do and i do it because of this exercise with the accent so an exercise that was just an ex exercise hey play these notes play these accents don't think about why don't worry about it just play was much more helpful for my technique than an exercise specifically based on technique <sighs> What? How does that work? Go watch 10 drummers. I'll give you, I'll get you started. Dave Weckl, Virgil Donati, Chester Thompson, Alex Van Halen, John Bonham, Neil Peart, Greg Bissonette, Rod Morgenstein, Terry Bozio, oh, Antonio Sanchez. And look at all the, their technique. It's all different. Antonio has this amazingly cool thing that he like lays the stick down, he, his hand is underneath the stick and he's like laying it down on the cymbal and then picking it up and the sound he gets is magnificent. So what the heck does that mean? What is that about? So two things. First, there, there ain't no one right technique. Everybody's hands, shoulders, knees and toes are different and are gonna figure out an equilibrium where the motion works for them. The thing that you should be paying attention to is doing the thing. If you get too far in your own way about your technique, you will sabotage yourself and it will take a million times longer to get where you want to go. This doesn't matter whether you're practicing the rudiments or a crazy samba groove for the drum set or polyrhythms or odd times or anything. Think about what you want to do. I always get grumpy about the line from The Empire Strikes Back that Yoda says to Luke, do or do not, there is no try, right? When Luke is trying to get the X-Wing out of the swamp. And I'm like, well, but how could he do it if he didn't try? And it's an interesting philosophical question, but there is something to be said for the fact that if you think that you're going to try to do something, you have already set a barrier in your way. Whereas, if you just think you're going to do something, you start out three steps ahead. Does this mean everything you ever do will be perfect? Does this mean you will play every note you want to play in every concert you ever play? Of course not. You will make lots of mistakes. But the mistakes will be a part of the process. They won't be a damnation of you or your ability. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes so much that Beethoven and Miles Davis both talked about mistakes and both tried to convince people that mistakes weren't the thing to worry about, right? That's pretty heavy. Two of the musicians in history that I listened to the most both said, hey, you know those mistake things? Yeah, let them go. So let's get into the playing. I said, I said we weren't going to talk as much today and already I've lied. I got to be honest, and this, so this is confession number two for this week's video. Last week when I filmed the video, I didn't realize it was going to be a part of a series until I was finished editing. I had already filmed the drumming, I had already filmed most of the voiceover, and I realized 
wait, this is, this is the start of something. This isn't a complete thought. Let's do more. But then when it came time to film this week's video, I didn't know what to play. I had a couple ideas that were bad <laughs> and, or at least didn't go where I thought I wanted to go. You know, let's take some simple ideas and build them up. Let's do the blah, blah, blah. So I was sitting with what I considered to be a pretty bad case of writer's block. And then, have y'all been watching the, like, the sea shanties on TikTok? Because, like, I am in love with the sea shanties on TikTok <laughs> and all the duets that people are doing. Oh, my. One of the things I was going to do anyway this week was do a little, do some duets with some TikTok videos. And so I thought, well, hey, let's use that Weller Man sea shanty as kind of the basis for this talk. Because, heck yeah, if there's anything more fun than drumming along with Wellerman, I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, so so that's confession two. I totally had Roger's block until I decided to do that. And then I couldn't stop laughing because that seemed like the funniest thing ever. Let's go through some of these. None of these do I play simple throughout. Towards the end of all of them, it's difficult to contain myself. I get excited and they get a little... Trick. Everyone, I'm using the same version over and over again. I'm using a version that has three verse chorus sections. First verse, I am sitting out and I'm just getting the groove. And then for the first chorus, the second and third verse and chorus sections, I am playing whatever I want to play. I am trying to think as little as possible. There's a couple times, the ones that are simpler are the ones where I am more like kind of setting parameters for myself. So first let's check out one that's basically just my little side snares. Ship that put to sea, the name of the ship was a belly of tea. The winds blew up her bow, up down below my belly boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale and tow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. The boat had had the water, the whales still came up and caught her and to the state heart and fought her when, when she died from low. Soon may the well man come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. And now there's one that starts on my main snare. Ship that put to sea, the name of the ship was a belly of tea. The winds blew up her bow, up down below my belly boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been to each from shore and down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands on the score and three went away. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us And there's a couple where the beat starts pretty in, you know, boom, bap, boom, bap, or four in the floor with the bass drum. Nothing too crazy to start. And a couple of those stay pretty simple throughout, and a couple of those get a little bit more intricate. Blow my belly boys blow. Oh, 
But the thing is, to reference something from last week, when I'm playing those simpler versions, I am trying to make the best choices I can. I'm listening to the song, listening to the melody. I have the first singer is pounding the quarter note, so I'm listening to the quarter note. Sometimes I'm playing with him, sometimes I'm not. But I'm trying to make musical choices. Sometimes in a groove context. In a blow, my belly boys blow. Someday the weatherman come to bring the sugar and tea and rum One day when the tonguing is done we'll take our leave and go She had not been to weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale and go Someday the weatherman come to bring the sugar and tea and rum then sometimes I'm making, trying to make musical choices just completely free. Blow my belly boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring the sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done we'll take our leave and go. We had not been two weeks from shore and down on her a right well born. Captain called all hands on story to take
the things I used to do a lot as a kid was sit with my drum pad and I was crazy. I used to, I, it was the eighties. And so I had a boom box and I used to bring my boom box to the show and I would put it in the stands and tape the shows and listen to the shows loudly at home and on the drum corps bus on the way to shows. And everyone hated me because I was obnoxious. Wear headphones is the, is the lesson I wish someone had taught me, but I would play along with these shows on my drum pad. And I would also play along to the radio and Van Halen and Def Le- Led Zeppelin and Madonna and all this music that I was listening to, I would play on the drum pad. And I wouldn't sit there and play eighth notes and quarter notes. I would play all the stuff that I was playing in drum corps. So all this rudimental stuff, lots of rolls, lots of accents, lots of, you know, multiple bounce press buzz rolls. I would do those on the drum pad, all this stuff. And I was just, it was just falling out of my head. I knew the songs, right? And so sometimes I would play exercises that we were doing in drum corps. I would play those along with the song. But a lot of times I would just improvise. You know, if you have trouble improvising, best advice I can give you is just do it a lot. Blow my belly boys, blow. There's a bonus footage from the Lord of the Rings movies, and 
I'm getting really old because now it feels like the Lord of the Rings movies is dating myself. And I saw those when I was 30. So, <laughs> woohoo! Um, but in the Lord of the Rings movies, there's this scene where one of the characters is drunk. They're in this giant hall and he's drunk and he's saying this stuff. And so the actor afterwards was talking about how he was improvising these scenes. And he said, you know, the thing about improvising is 90% of it is crap. And I'd like to think that that's an overstatement. But the thing about improvising is you, to me, the important lesson about that 90% of it is crap. You can't ever go into it, you know, with a standard that it's going to be awesome. Your improvisation is going to be what your improvisation is. And this isn't the video for it, but we can talk about strategies more specific than just getting out of your own way on how to make your improvisation better. But the only answer is do it and pay attention to what you're doing and see where it goes. And if you're improvising with some music, listen to the music. If you're improvising in a solo form, which we're going to talk about more next time, essentially listen to yourself. Think about what you're playing, what you want to play next. Don't get stuck in that process, that exercise we used, you know, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, try and make them perfect. Don't get stuck in that exercise when you're actually improvising. Get out of that exercise. The whole point of doing that exercise is so that when you're playing it, you don't have, it's the same as doing paradiddles to the point that you can do them by rote, right? You want to be so you can pick your next note by rote, right? You don't have to think about it. Just, you know what you want to do next. And then improvising sometimes goes well and sometimes could go better. So I lied. I said there were two confessions for this video. There are three. I wanted to play some unaccompanied bits after the several versions of playing along with the with the sea shanty. None of them are good. I'm going to let you see one of them so you can see see it. It's not terrible. I, I didn't like, you know, drop a stick or I didn't like completely fall apart. It just rambles. It doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. It's not what I wanted to do. I started thinking. And so I want you to see what that looks like too. None of I I don't really feel like it's bad from a technical standpoint, but I do not think it's solid musically. And and like I say, I want you to see what that looks like. versions with maybe one or two exceptions of me playing along with the shanty I think are super cool I and mean, you can tell I am smiling and having a ball <laughs> playing along with that shanty it is like the most fun thing ever in the history of anything oh my 
Ship that put to sea, the name of the ship was a belly of tea. The winds blew up her bow, up down or below my belly boys blow. <laughs> But then when I went to play unaccompanied and those, I was trying to keep that shanty in my head, but I got lost in the weeds. I started thinking, I was like, I need to, I need to do something more impressive. I need to do something more impressive. I need to do something more impressive. And suddenly that weight of the critical brain dragged my, my doing brain into the weeds with it. If you read either of those books, that, that'll be... That'll be a topic of discussion, the, the sort of the two selves. If you've ever done negative talk or even positive affirmative talk, you know what the two selves are. If you've ever played something and you've been like, well, that was terrible. You stink. Right. That that's one voice. <laughs> right. Who are you talking to? Right. You're talking to yourself. <laughs> so you're talking to the other part of you. And the trick is to to get to get that critical voice focused. You don't want to let go of the critical voice entirely, or you would never know when you played a paradiddle correctly. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. You wouldn't know without your critical voice if that was correct or not. But when you make a mistake and you play right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, 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 that's not bad. Mistakes aren't bad. They don't make you bad. They're a thing that happened. I'll warn you right now, both of these books are a little... If you know anything about Buddhist kind of thinking and philosophy, they're a little Buddhist, and that tends to be a little fluffy for for me. Um, I'm a little bit more concrete when when people tell me not to be attached to things. I naturally recoil and say, "But I like being attached to things." But that said, there's something very valuable in this idea that that the critical part of ourselves isn't always on our side. Sometimes your critical brain is going to trip you. Have you ever have you ever thought you were overthinking something or thinking too much or any way that thinking got in your way? What does that even mean? How could how could that possibly be a thing, right? And that's when that critical brain is overactive. Imagine when you're walking around. Do you ever think to yourself, oh, wow, I really blew that one step there. I picked my left leg up too high. Oh, I am such a loser. Right. And no, probably maybe every once every couple of years, something like that happens. Um, the phrase walk much comes to, <laughs> comes to mind. If you think about why that is, it's because. There's a few reasons. One, walking has become rote, to use that word I used to use. You don't think about it. It's, it's totally in the back of your brain. But also because you don't have an emotional weight to it. I'm not suggesting that you let go of that emotional weight to your music making. Whether you started drumming last week and you're like full of joy and excitement and you get frustrated first thing, or you've been playing for 70 years and you can do almost everything you want to, but there's that one thing you can't do, and that frustrates you. I'm not saying let go of that frustration. I'm saying make friends with that frustration. That frustration is how you get better and also how you know when you're doing what you want to do. So this video has been, if anything, even a little fluffier than last week in terms of language. That's why I wanted to play for you more. Pay attention to the examples I showed you. Listen to the chant, pay attention to what I do with it. The simple things I do, the more complicated things I do. Pay attention to how much fun I'm having. Ask yourself if it looks like I am overthinking. And then when we go to the unaccompanied example, ask yourself if it looks like I'm overthinking because I am. <laughs> Spoiler. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to tell some difference. 
it is harder, I think, to play unaccompanied than to play with something else. Uh, as a drummer, I was never super excited about playing by myself. To me, the whole point is conversation and interaction. And even when it's just a recording, I feel like I'm bouncing off of someone else's ideas, especially with these sea shanties. Oh my god. <laughs> I apologize for being so, like, just silly gaga about the sea shanties, but no, I don't. I can't, I can't help myself. They're just so cool. That's going to bring us to the end of today. There's a lot of playing to watch. There is also a lot of talking. I told you. I, I warned you that even with more playing, there would be more talk, or as much talking. And so pay attention more to the playing than the talking. If you want, download the sea shanty too. If it's not your thing, find something that makes you as giddy as this makes me. And just play. Play quarter notes. Play eighth notes. Play really simple. Think to yourself, okay, I'm going to try and mimic the melody. Okay, I'm going to try and contrast the melody. And, and have these really general thoughts in your head. But then when it comes to the actual playing, just think about the notes you want to play. Don't think about how you're going to get there, how you're going to do them. Just do them. If you can record yourself, all the better, because then then you'll be able to see, oh, hey, wait, when I went for the bell of the ride symbol, my arm did a weird thing. And then you'll know for the future. Oh, wow. OK. Try to make your motions natural. Sure. But when you're actually doing, don't think like that. Just do. Next week, we are going to go whole hog into ultimate flow freedom for both playing with music and also with soloing next week we'll be we'll be back to like last week there'll be more specific exercise type examples as well as some more observing me demonstrate i hope you found something useful in this lesson this is something that is my favorite part of playing is just just playing from my heart and and letting Letting the ideas come and just creating. Sea shanties. Arr. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you liked this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell icon. I also just started a Patreon, and I will include a link in the doobly-doo to that. If you would like to join me on Patreon, there's going to be all sorts of rewards. I'm sort of just working some things out, but some basics are early access to videos, a lot of extra footage, um, being able to vote on some topics. It's also one way that you can get like a private lesson with me, um, just as a simplified form of that happening. And so I would love your support there. I will see you next week when we will wrap up this three part meditation on flow. I've been doing these videos on flow with that same general flowing spirit. I haven't scripted things out too much. I haven't thought too much. I've just kind of done them. After next week, I am sure I will get back to the script because that is my nature, even when I think flow is good. So, Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you all next week. Love you guys. Take it easy. Bye.